Kotlin Mutex. The first uh, thought that crosses your mind is uh, some kind of a mutant, right? But that's not it. Mutex is a short for a mutual exclusion. What? You don't know anything about thread safety, synchronization and concurrency? Don't worry, I'll explain everything. Come on in. In a world of a Kotlin coroutines, Mutex is a synchronization tool designed to control the access to a shared resources within coroutines. It uh, acts as a lock, guaranteeing that uh, only one coroutine can access a critical section of the code at a time. This prevents race conditions and uh, data corruptions that uh, could arise from uh, concurrent modifications. To help you understand this even better, let me give you a real-world analogy. Let's say that uh, you live in a house with uh, three people, where uh, only one bathroom exists. In this analogy, people are coroutines and the bathroom is a shared resource. A mutex in this scenario is a door that uh, separates people from the bathroom. When a person wants to go to the bathroom, it takes a key, enters the room and uh, locks the door. In this scenario, just imagine that uh, only one person can enter the bathroom at the same time. This means that the first coroutine has acquired a mutex lock, and it's using a shared resource. When other coroutines try to use that uh, shared resource, they are suspended because another coroutine already holds the mutex lock and uh, is executing a certain task which means that uh, other people need to wait in a line, assuming that the waiting in a line is a non-blocking operation, until the first person who is using the bathroom leaves the room. And that's when a mutex lock is released. So that the next coroutine can acquire a mutex lock, enter the bathroom and uh, use the shared resource all over again. When that happens, a person unlocks the door and gives the key to the next person waiting in line. Now, one interesting scenario. What if the person inside the bathroom suddenly encounters a health issue and uh, collapses? People outside the bathroom are uh, still gonna wait for that key indefinitely and they're never gonna access that uh, shared resource. However, there is a safety mechanism that uh, allows us to obtain the key back if something bad happens. In code, that means we observe the execution and the call unlock function if an exception occurs. Even if nothing bad happens, we still want to make sure to unlock the mutex after the task is complete. So here is what we have learned so far. Kotlin Mutex class is uh, specifically designed for uh, use within the coroutines framework. Mutex is a specific type of a synchronization mechanism used to achieve thread safety. By using Mutex to control the access to the shared resource, you essentially synchronize how threads interact with them. However, due to its uh, suspending nature, it's uh, not supposed to be used with uh, threads without coroutines. While technically possible, using a mutex with a regular threads in Kotlin isn't the most uh, suitable approach. Here is why. The lock function wouldn't truly block the thread as uh, it would in a traditional thread synchronization. Instead, the thread uh, might just be switched to another thread while waiting. And this behavior uh, doesn't fully leverage the suspending nature of the lock functionality, potentially leading to a less efficient uh, synchronization in a pure thread environment. If you are primarily working with uh, threads and not coroutines in Kotlin, you should use uh, other tools like a synchronized function. But I'm gonna talk about that and showcase an example a little bit uh, later in this video. So keep watching, it's a really important topic for every Kotlin developer. Alright, so enough theory, let's see some uh, practical examples. We're gonna start with a simple one. I have already prepared a project, right? So in this uh, one screen app, we have a uh, one text on the center of the screen. This uh, text element is uh, tied to a counter variable, which initial value is zero. For the simplicity, I will add the launched effect block that uh, triggers once we enter the composition. When that happens, I want to launch uh, 10 different coroutines where uh, each one of them will increase the counter by uh, 1 after a delay of uh, 1 second. 
what will happen after we launch this application is that uh, after one second the counter will immediately update to number 10. Because coroutines are uh, super fast and uh, are executed in a parallel. And you're not gonna even notice that this code was uh, executed 10 times actually. So what just happened? In this concurrent environment, 10 different coroutines have accessed the same shared resource at the same time. Which is great. Concurrency is great. However, with the mutex, we can make sure that uh, each one of those uh, 10 coroutines are suspended and awaiting their turn to get an access to a shared resource. So that uh, instead of uh, accessing the same resources 10 times in parallel, we're gonna access it uh, one at a time, without blocking the thread of course. Like that bathroom analogy from earlier. So here be sure to add the lock function. Then in the try block add the logic and in the finally block don't forget to unlock the mutex or otherwise you may encounter a deadlock. So it's really important. However, someone might argue that in this example with a simple integer value, it's more convenient to use atomic integer. And that's partially correct. Atomic integer is definitely used for synchronization in a multi-threaded environment. But because atomic integer is a Java construct and it's not made to be used with Kotlin coroutines, we are not gonna use it here either. Anyhow, we could improve this example here by calling a with lock function. This function basically does the same thing of uh, triggering the try and finally block so that uh, we don't have to do it on our own, which is useful for sure. Other thing that I should point out here is that uh, even though you're uh, seeing here a try and finally block inside, uh, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't wrap your code in the try and catch block, because with lock function is not catching your exceptions. Let me give you an example. Here, when we reach number 5, I will throw an exception. Let's launch the application and see what happens. You will notice that on the fifth coroutine, an exception will be thrown. Which means the counter will not increase its value in the coroutine and we are gonna end up with number 9 instead of the 10. Ok, so now let me give you another example so that you can see how really important it is to synchronize your concurrent execution properly. Let's say that we are building an app for a bank, right? A bank is a critical application because it works directly with the money. Here, for the simplicity, I will add the one property that will represent the user balance. We can add the one private mutable, while the second one immutable and exposed to the public. Inside we can add the two functions, one to receive the money and the second one to spend it. For us as a bank, it is really important to make sure that people can spend only the money that they have on their account. For the UI of this example, I will create another screen that will display the current user balance on the center. But also two buttons below to send and receive the money. On top of all of that, be sure to initialize the bank class observe the current balance property and create a one coroutine scope to trigger those uh, two banking functions. Because they are suspend functions. Now imagine that for some reason this suspend function is uh, executed multiple times from different coroutines. Like when we press a button or even if some bug tries to trigger it. In this case, we're gonna click the spend button to trigger multiple executions from a multiple coroutines. When that happens, even though we have added an if check, the balance will become negative. Now, let's try adding a mutex to this example to avoid this uh, critical issue. So, let's wrap uh, all of those uh, functions within the with lock function. Great. Run the application. Click the first button to add some balance, and then click the button to spend it. As you can see, now we were able to trigger an asynchronous operation by synchronizing our coroutines to access the shared resource one at a time. Amazing! Now the last thing, I want to talk about singletons and the mutex. So, a singleton pattern itself does not guarantee thread safety for internal modifications. If a singleton holds a shared resource that needs concurrent access, you might still need to use mutex within its functions to control the access. 
I've told you earlier in this video that you can use a synchronized function to create a singleton within your class. So, let's mark our bank class with a private constructor. It means that now we are unable to construct this class. And instead, we're gonna add a companion object with a function that will be able to provide a single instance of this class instead. The volatile annotation allows us to access instance in a thread safe manner. Now, here in this example, it's technically possible to use a mutex here instead of the synchronized block. But that's not a good idea, because mutex functions are suspend functions which would result in this class being initialized only from a coroutine scope, which we don't need actually. And even if we avoid that somehow, the synchronized function is a lot simpler for this scenario, which fits better. So, to summarize all of this once again, mutex is a thread-safe mechanism for ensuring only one thread or a coroutine can access a shared resource at a time. They help uh, synchronize access to critical sections of the code that uh, modify a shared state. Unlike synchronized block, mutex offer a more precise control over which section of the code requires synchronization. But also, acquiring and releasing locks can introduce some overhead, potentially impacting a performance. So there it is. Those were some basic information about Kotlin mutex. Anyhow, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about the things that I've said? Do you have something more to add? What's your overall experience? Feel free to share that down below. Other than that, don't forget to leave a like, but only if you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.